Hi there, my name is Doug Hills, and this is the Manga Studio Guide. Now, in this episode, I'm opening up the mailbag and answering questions from you, the Manga Studio user base. I receive many questions from users on the various social media platforms that don't necessarily require a full episode to answer. So instead, I'm taking those questions and answering as many as I can within one episode. Now, first up is probably the most common question I've either been asked directly or I've seen asked on social media. Are Manga Studio and Clip Studio the same program, and what's with the different names anyway? The short answer is yes. Manga Studio and Clip Studio are the same program. They both run the same way, contain all the same brushes, templates, and materials, and are, as far as I understand, updated at the same time. The different names began in September of 2013 when Celsius, the Japanese company that created the program, announced that they would exclusively sell the digital version of the program under its original name of Clip Studio. Smith Micro, the company that has distributed the program outside of Japan, would now exclusively sell the physical copy of the program under Manga Studio. Needless to say, many users became confused. Now, at the time of this recording, the two companies worked out a new deal. Now, users can either purchase either Manga Studio or Clip Studio from Smith Micro's website. But if you would prefer to purchase Clip Studio directly from Celsius, you could do so through their website. So that's the basic story behind the different names. But no matter what you call it or where you bought it, they are the same program. Now, for simplicity's sake, you'll hear me use the term Manga Studio in my videos. Next up, why does the program lag so much when drawing on a Mac? Now, this is another question I get a lot from users. Well, a lot of Mac users, but for obvious reasons. From what I have gathered, Manga Studio does not work well with other apps that may be running at the same time, or at least in the background. This is especially noticeable if you're trying to watch videos in a browser while working. But it may also be noticeable if there are other programs making use of the video card or video chip in your machine. The only solution I've seen is to simply not run any of those programs while drawing in Manga Studio. It's probably not ideal for those of you who like to watch movies while working, but it beats having a, a lagging brush. In addition, you can beef up the amount of RAM used by Manga Studio by going into the System Preferences under Manga Studio Preferences on Macs or File Preferences on Windows. Select the Performance tab and then increase the Allocate to Application percentage. I have mine at about 70 to 80 percent, but you can try a higher value and see if that improves the performance in any way. These solutions might not completely fix the lag problem that Mac users have to deal with, but it should hopefully make things more tolerable. Mick asks, is it possible to create your own toolbar? Now, if you're referring to the command bar you see at the top of the Manga Studio user interface, it is. From the main menu, you would select Manga Studio Command Bar Settings if you're on Mac, or File Command Bar Settings if you're on Windows. This brings up the Command Bar Settings dialog box, which you can then use to rearrange your command bar by clicking and dragging any of the icons you see here, group icons together by dragging one icon on top of another, remove icons by selecting them and pressing the trash button, and add icons by coming down here and selecting any of the main menu or auto action commands you see available and then pressing either add or insert into group. You could even import your own custom icon for a command by pressing this button and selecting your new icon wherever you've saved it on your machine. And when you're done, press OK to save your new command bar setup or press reset to return your command bar to its default setup. James asks, is it possible to rename the page files after you've already created the story? Unfortunately, no. While you can rearrange the pages around within a story file in Manga Studio, renaming the actual .lip file can't be done as it would just confuse the story file and wouldn't recognize the change anyway. Jonathan asks, is there any way to get the ruler to display inches that include quarter, eighth, and sixteenth marks? Unfortunately, no. Unlike in Manga Studio 4, where there were ruler marks included with the straight rulers that you created, Manga Studio 5 does not have that option. At Token Duelist asks, what are some good methods for organizing layers a bit more efficiently slash organizing workspace on the program? This answer is going to vary from user to user, so I can only speak for myself and my personal preferences. For organizing my layers, I tend to break things down into folders, and I'll show you this comic page here I have as an example. I have a frame folder. I have a folder containing the various thumbnails and pencil roughs. If I have more than one ink layer, I'll place those into either an inks folder or just directly within the frame folder. And if I have word balloons, I place them in a word balloon folder here and I usually place it above the frame folders so I can keep the balloons above the frame borders. Now, as far as my workspace, I tend to arrange my tool drawers where they're most comfortable while I'm working. I'm right-handed, so I place most of the common drawers I will use on the right-hand side, while things like materials or other tools that I don't use as frequently, I place over on the left-hand side. I just found, and this is probably because I'm getting old, that this was easier on my drawing arm and shoulder. But you should try and experiment with the setup that feels the most comfortable for you. Play around with where the drawers are on the workspace, or if you want to have a palette floating along on the desktop, just drag it off of a drawer. If you want to keep things as decluttered as possible, press the tab key to hide all your palettes, and you can always bring them back again using the tab key, or if you want to bring back a specific one, come up to the main menu and select view, and then the palette that you'd like to use. Ronan asks, 
I'm in the UK and new page defaults to A4 and I can't work out how to set the ratio to US comic size. In a future episode, I'm going to revisit creating a new page with the most recent version of the program, but I'll go over a quick summary of the page dimensions for a US comic. When the new page dialog box appears, the first thing I do is make sure that the unit of measurement is set to inches. Then I turn on manga draft settings and set those dimensions first. For the binding size, it will be 10 inches by 15 inches and the bleed will be 0.25 inches. For the inner border, 9 inches by 14 inches and once those are set I go up to the canvas and set it to 11 inches by 17 inches. I set the preferred resolution, expression color, paper color, and optional material template. And finally I click register in preset to save these dimensions in the preset drop down list. So now when I create a new US comic page I can just select it from the preset drop down list instead of re-entering all those values. Andre asks, I tried to make my own brushes but can't figure out how to use or import my own textures and brush shapes. Now the easiest method I found is to open the image file with your texture, like this JPEG file I have with the sample brush shape. Now depending on what you're importing, in this case we're importing a brush tip shape, you may need to remove the white background. So what we're going to do is switch from color to monochrome and then select black. That way all the white is removed from the image. Then edit. Register image as material. We enter in the name. I'll stick with brush tip. Save a location, image material. Select whether or not I'm going to use brush tip shape and or paper texture and press OK. Now when I create a new brush, I would select material and there's my new brush tip. And now I have the basis for my new pencil, pen, or brush. Lily asks, is there a warp transform tool? Well, there are two actually. Free transform and mesh transform. And both of these are located in the main menu under edit transform. Free Transform lets us distort an image or selection by clicking and dragging any of the control points you see along the border. This gives us the ability to not only skew the image, but also do things like transform it to fit along perspective lines, for example. Mesh Transform gives us 16 control points that we can use to really distort our image in practically any way we want. This option could be really helpful if, for example, you want to take a label and have it contour along something like a t-shirt or a can or a poster. Jesse asks, are there any tips at editing vector brush paths? And sometimes when creating a vector line, there are more control points created than are probably needed. Fortunately, it's really easy to remove any of those unwanted points using the Object Select tool. Now, I've explained in the past that you can use the Object Select tool to click and drag any of the control points along a vector path. But if you select a point and then right click with your mouse, you'll see a sub menu appear that gives you a few additional options. You can add additional control points if you feel there aren't enough. You can remove control points if you feel there are too many. You can take a control point that may be angled and turn it into a curved path or vice versa. And you can even cut a line by selecting cut line. And this gives you a bit more control over how you want your vector line to ultimately look. And finally, Kaylee asks, pretty much looking for the quickest way to flood fill and shade vector line art. Now, because of how vectors work in Manga Studio, it's not really possible to fill or shade directly on a vector layer. What I tend to do is create a raster layer and place it below the vector layer. Then, I grab the magic wand tool, select the refer other layer sub tool, hold down the shift key, and then select all of the open spaces within the liner. From there, I can either use the fill tool to fill in the spaces, or I can switch to the gradient tool and create either a linear or radial gradient within the space. While it's not the same as adding a fill or gradient directly on the vector layer, this is a way I've discovered to get that similar effect. And with that, I'm going to wrap up this mailbag episode, which was brought to you by Patreon subscribers like the ones you see here. Thanks, guys. If you'd like to support the Manga Studio Guide and help me keep these videos free for everyone forever, you can subscribe for as little as a penny per video on Patreon, or you can buy page templates, rulers, guidebooks, or just throw some money in the tip jar on my Shopify site. Thank you all for your support and for watching these videos, and I'll see you next time.